Welcome to the Audacity to Podcast, episode 194, 10 Production Mistakes Podcasters Make. Thank you for joining me for the Audacity to Podcast. I'm Daniel J. Lewis, and this is the award-winning how-to podcast about podcasting. It's where I give you the guts and teach you the tools to launch or improve your own podcast for sharing your passions and finding success. There are a lot of mistakes that we as podcasters make. I make mistakes. You, let's be honest, you make mistakes too. And podcasts that we listen to make mistakes. No one is going to get this ever completely perfect. And if you try, it will kill you because you will probably die before you can actually make it perfect. So don't try to make it perfect. But these production mistakes that I'm going to share with you are very common and they are quite easy to fix as well. And I'm focusing on just production mistakes. There are plenty of other mistakes we could make and that we certainly do make and we hear other podcasters make. But these are just 10 production mistakes mistakes that we could be making in our podcasts and some ways that you could potentially overcome some of these. I'd love to hear your comments on this. Some of the other production mistakes that you see that you've made or that you've overcome, please comment on the show notes at theaudacitypodcast.com slash production mistakes. That's the show notes for episode 194. So here we go. Number one, having bad volumes. There are multiple volumes that go into an audio or a video podcast. In fact, all of these things I'm going to share with you, these production mistakes, apply regardless of whether you're doing audio or video. So there are five different ways that you could have bad volumes in your podcast. First is it could be the volume between your hosts. This is a very, very common thing where I'm talking at one volume, And then my guest or co-host is talking at a much quieter volume or at a much louder volume, and it makes it very difficult to listen to. This forces the listener or the viewer to have to adjust their volume knob back and forth or slider back and forth in order to listen, or they just have to put up with the inconsistent volume levels, or they'll just give up and skip the episode altogether. So when you're recording your episodes, try to make sure that your volume across your different hosts is consistent. Someone might be talking loudly, or they might be talking more quietly, or it could be that they're closer to the microphone, farther from the microphone, their equipment is making them louder or making them quieter. Whatever it is, try to even this out. A compressor can be a great way to even this out in that it reduces the differences between the loud points and the quiet points. And there are many different compressors out there. Many programs have them built in. You can also get third-party compressors for free or premium compressors. But the volume level between the hosts, I think, is the most common thing that you'll hear podcasters make as a mistake. Another volume to be aware of is the volume between the voice and the background. This could be background music Or maybe some kind of background effects, like if you're doing an audio drama podcast, or you just want some kind of environment with your podcast. Maybe you record in a coffee shop, which can be really cool sounding, can be great for certain types of content and presentation styles. But a big problem you might run into with any of these is that the music or the background noise is too loud compared to the voice. This prevents people from hearing what is most important in most cases and that is the voice. I would say that there's almost no way the background sound could be too quiet unless you want to talk about what's going on in the background. But in that case, it really shouldn't be background sound. It should be something that you talk about, you raise it back up so everyone can hear what you're talking about, then you lower it so then you can speak and people hear you. Yes, that takes a bit more work and a bit more planning, but comes out with a much better production. So that's volume contrast between your voice and the background, whether that's music or background effects. Speaking of music, another common problem with bad volume is volume between the segments. It might be that here's the segment where it's just me talking solo and I have an interview coming up and the interview, I'm much louder or I'm much quieter. 
or I play music, some kind of segue to a different segment of my audio, or it's my intro music or my outro music, and the music is blaringly loud, and then I come in with a soft, quiet voice. That kind of thing is a big mistake podcasters make. The overall volume of the episode, how loud or how quiet is it? Are people having to turn up the volume on their players up to sometimes bad levels where it's introducing new noise because of their player? Are they having to do that or are they having to turn it down too much? Your volume in your episode as a whole is very important. Yes, you should be consistent. I'll mention that in a moment. But if you discover a better way to do things and you start to meet a target standard, then it's fine to change and all of your future episodes be different from then on out. But consider the volume of your episode as a whole. Can people actually hear it? A great tip for this that I learned in an audio production workshop I attended recently was record some car noise. Actually take a recorder, maybe it's your smartphone, maybe something you use in your podcast recording, take it into the car and record while you drive around the highway, the city streets, anything like that. So you've got this car noise, then take that car noise and add it as an extra audio track in your audio recording, figure out what level is actually reasonable for it to play back, and then see how well can you hear the rest of your voice in your podcast even with this background noise of the car. Don't try to make a contrast there by decreasing the volume of the car noise. Let the car noise be louder and figure out where your voice needs to be in order to be heard. So the overall volume of the episode, but also your volume across episodes. This is something that I've become a proponent of much more recently, and that is a loudness normalization standard. And I'm still researching different ways of doing this. And primarily looking at how can you do this with Audacity, how can you do this with GarageBand, what is a, as much as possible, foolproof way of reaching a loudness normalization standard so that episode one is the same volume level as episode two. And not only are your episodes the same volume level when you listen to different episodes and different episodes of your own show, but when you jump over from your show to someone else's show, If they're reaching that same standard, then the volume level will be consistent and people won't have to adjust their volume knobs as they're listening when they switch over from one podcast to the other. This happened to me just recently. I was closing my pool for the season and I listen to podcasts while I'm doing all kinds of things around the house. And I was listening to a podcast I really enjoy. I could hear them all right. It was a little bit quiet, but I could hear them all right. Then the next podcast came up, which was a much more professionally produced podcast, and the volume level was significantly higher, and it startled me how loud it was playing into my headphones, so I had to quickly turn it down because it was a different show that's produced differently. Let's standardize this. In case you want to know, the basic standard I'm a proponent of is negative 16 luffs with a maximum true peak of negative 1.5 or at most negative one. How you reach that standard, I'll be covering in future episodes as soon as I figure out the best way and cheapest way to do this. But a phonic is a great tool that can help you do this. But if a phonic also costs and depending on how much you need to use it, it could cost a lot. So this is number one, having bad volumes. Number two, publishing poor audio quality. Whether you're doing audio or video, Your audio quality is the most important thing, and you could be getting poor audio quality due to several reasons. It could be bad equipment that you're using. Maybe you're using that cheap stick microphone that came with your computer or a headset microphone or some condenser microphone that you picked up at a garage sale somewhere. Anything like that could contribute to poor audio quality. It could also be a bad environment. Sometimes sitting in the corner of the room is not the best place to be. Sometimes sitting in the middle of the room is not the best place to be. Often it's somewhat onto one side of the room is a good place, but you might end up being near an air conditioner or a dishwasher or a window and it's noisy outside. Anything like that can make your audio quality much worse. It could also be that you are ignorant of the tools that you're trying to use Like a compressor limiter gate, for example, is very easy to mess up and then you end up with 
really bad problems in your audio. Like there are podcasts that I listen to where the breath of the host is over amplified because of the way that they're doing their audio processing with the tools that they use. Some of it might be the hardware tools, some of it might be the software tools. But a common problem I see with hardware tools like a hardware compressor limiter gate is that the threshold is too high and therefore it cuts off the ends of words. For example, I'm going to turn up the threshold on my compressor limiter gate so you'll hear what this will sound like. So I'm going to say something that doesn't really matter at all. Right now, I've got the compressor limiter gate uh, turned up higher. The threshold is up really high. And as I'm looking at it, I just see the light is barely blinking. So you're probably not hearing most of what I'm saying. So you probably didn't hear what I just said or most of it because my compressor limiter gate was over compressing or shutting things off between spots. That's a common problem that can happen if you don't know how to use your equipment or you introduce more noise because you have the wrong volume levels in the wrong places and such. And there could be a a variety of other problems degrading the quality of your audio, like bad audio cables, or maybe an audio cable is next to a power cable. I helped someone with that recently that they said they were experiencing a buzz in their recordings or at least in their monitoring of their recordings. And it turned out that they had an audio cable sitting on top of a power cable. That's a common thing to watch out for. It could also be the way you're recording your audio. Maybe you're going into a computer to record your audio, and you're going in through an analog connection, which is often more susceptible to interference noise than a digital connection like a USB. So this is number two, publishing poor audio quality. Number three, Writing few or no show notes. Yes, this is actually a production thing because when you publish your episode, your show notes are part of your production. It's part of how people find and consume your content. So if you have few show notes, like just a basic sentence to say, in this episode, Bob and Jim talk about A, B, and C, that's not going to really help you much because it doesn't inspire people or compel them to consume this episode. It's also not helping you much in your search engine optimization to be findable because of how few keywords that you have. And Google is learning to become more and more human. So just a basic sentence or a paragraph will be seen as low quality content. Have at least, uh, here's a good guideline, at least 300 words in your content. If you have fewer than 300 words, it might be low value content. That doesn't mean you have to write it verbatim, but at least include your links, include photos, include a basic paragraph here and there talking about what you're saying. So it's kind of like a summary of what you're saying. If you really like the bullet point format, you could combine that so that you have in the top of your show notes, a list to say quick list of links mentioned or a quick list of news items read below for more details, anything like that. So you could combine it so you still have that very fast list where people can see he covered this, 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 and this, and then you have more information that actually mentions some of your thoughts on those things. So writing few or no show notes, that's number three production mistake podcasters make. Number four, editing and processing too much or too little There are many different ways that we can edit and process our audio. Editing is where you are adding things or removing things. Processing is where you are enhancing things, emphasizing things, or de-emphasizing things. For example, a compressor, uh, noise removal, volume normalization, that kind of stuff is processing. Removing your ums, pauses, adding sound effects, intros, outros, mixing different voices together. That's editing. And it's very easy to do this either too much or too little. The perfectionist will tend to do this too much, where they will edit out every single um and uh. That's not necessarily a bad thing to edit out all of those things. It's not a bad production, that is. But you might be creating other problems, where if you edit out an um or an uh, you might create an awkward pause Or you might create an awkward lack of a pause between words. 
Because we as humans do pause between words, between sentences. Sometimes we don't. When we say certain things, like it's the top of the world, if I say that random phrase off the top of my head and just other sentences that I'm saying, there's no definite point where you could put your cursor in a space and delete just a single word. So if you tried to delete a single word out of that, it would sound completely unnatural. That's too much editing. Too little editing would be those times where you know it, you go off on a rabbit trail, something happens that really doesn't need to be in the podcast, and it's not edited, it's not removed. I hear this in many podcasts out there where they are just basically wasting time by leaving something in. And I've seen this in some podcast reviews as I, since I run my podcastreviews.com, I kind of monitor what are people saying about podcasts out there in completely different industries. And I see occasionally here and there something like saying, I really wish you edited that out or this show could do with a lot more editing. Something like that. You want to strike a careful balance in this where you're not spending hours and hours with editing, but you're also not just publishing it in its raw potentially ugly form, unless you're really good at presenting and don't have many mistakes. What I've learned is I need more editing than I actually realized. For a while, I was releasing the Audacity podcast with almost no editing. I would only remove the catastrophic problems. Now that I have an audio editor, a producer really, and that's John Buchanan, and he's editing this episode. And some of these points have been inspired by him. I called him before I did this episode and I asked him for some of his ideas of podcasting uh, production mistakes that podcasters make. And he provided several of these great ideas as well. And he has pointed out to me certain things I do that I didn't realize I do, where I do need certain editing in places, certain distracting noises or moments And I like the freedom of knowing that if I mess up a sentence, I'll pause, place a marker, and say that sentence again. So it makes it a lot easier to edit as well as presents you, the listener, with a better production. So this is number four, editing and processing too much or too little. On the processing side, I focus there on the editing side. So on the processing side of this, if you have too much processing, it can literally give people headaches, like certain multiband compressor recipes that might be out there, or well, it is usually a compressor that would give people headaches, but it could also be equalization. You're giving yourself too much of a bass boost or not enough of a bass boost. You're processing your audio too much and it ends up sounding too noisy, or you're processing it too little and it might end up sounding too noisy. I ran into a really weird problem recently with one of our Once Upon a Time podcast episodes where... We tried to do some volume normalization as well as noise removal, and the result was really weird, and it wasn't from the noise removal. It was from the dynamic compressor that was creating this weird echo effect to the audio. It was really strange. I'd never run into that before, so we tried to figure this out. John Buchanan and I tried to figure this out and eventually got it working, but that was a case where maybe we were processing it too much. And there are other cases where podcasts are processed too little. They could use a little EQ or noise removal or especially volume normalization to a standard negative 16 luffs, maximum true peak at negative one, at least. That's number four, editing and processing too much or too little. Number five production mistake podcasters make, talking over each other. This is both a presentation mistake as well as it will create production nightmares. If you have more than one person talking into microphones, then you have the potential of people talking over each other. This can be very difficult, especially when you can't see the person in front of you. So even if you're doing an audio podcast over Skype, I do recommend turn on that webcam so that you can see each other pick up on these visual cues to see things like the other person is trying to get in a word so that you can say something, pause, let them speak before you then transition on to your next point if they want to fit something in. Being able to see each other really helps with not talking over each other. But this talking over each other might be something you can follow in the process, 
but it's not very easy for people to follow while they're listening to it because they're hearing multiple voices in their head and these multiple voices might be at the same volume level and in the same channel. It's centered maybe in their head. So they're hearing it at the exact same location, exact same volume level. They won't be able to distinguish it as well as you might be able to where you are talking at the same time as someone else is talking and you're kind of hearing what the other person is saying because they're in front of you. Your voice is inside you. So try to avoid this talking over each other or else you'll create a production nightmare to try and fix these things. This leads into number six production mistake podcasters make, recording onto the same track. This may not necessarily be a mistake, but it could potentially be, especially depending on what kind of content you're recording and how you're recording with whom you're recording. For example, in my podcast studio, I have a couple microphones and I do record all of my in-studio guests onto the same audio track. That's more acceptable than recording a remote guest or co-host onto that same track. Because here's the problem you could run into. For one thing, if I'm handling all the recording myself, I'm recording the Skype call and I'm recording my in-studio voice, and it's going into the same audio track, there might be a problem where my Skype caller has a pretty noisy background, but I don't. So if I process their audio according to their needs, it will process my audio in that same way and it might degrade the quality of my audio. Think about compressors, limiters, gates, uh, volume normalization, compression, anything like that, any kind of process that you could do on an audio if the different environmental recordings are in the same audio track, then it makes it more complicated for you to process these things and end up with a good quality result. So if you can, if you're recording someone that is in a different environment than you, try to get that onto a separate recording like a Skype call recorder or maybe an easy way to hack this together is you put your voice on the left side and you put your remote guest on the right side into almost whatever recorder you're using. You can do that kind of thing. You can also apply the same principle into the other things that you record other than just your voice, but your sounds. I love recording in multiple tracks with a soundtrack and a vocal track. That is, whenever I play audio into my podcast, I am playing it live because I use a soundboard on my computer. If you want to know what it is, it's Ambrosia Software's soundboard for OS X. I really like that. If you're on Windows, consider jingle palette it's completely free soundboard does cost for os 10 it's about 50 dollars. that's pretty expensive but it is nice software i do like it i hate black cat soundbite it's ugly to me and it has other problems but i play my sounds live into the podcast recording when you watch us podcast any of our shows live and you can always go to noodle.mx slash live to see when we do that you'll often see us mess up the timing in some way with the intro or the outro. We stumble over saying something. The hardest thing was my outro to our Once Upon a Time in Wonderland podcast. What I did is I would start the music playing as we're doing the outro, wrapping things up. I would make some funny line, quote some funny line from the TV show. I would pause, the music would come to a louder point, and it would have this little bit of a lull, and then I would say, and thanks for listening, and then the music would continue playing. I think of the 16 or so episodes we recorded of that podcast, I nailed the timing maybe twice. All of the other times, I had to shift things around because either I talked too long, I didn't talk long enough, I started the music too early, I started it too late, whatever the case... It didn't line up very well. So instead of doing this thing where I'm circling around, which I'll mention something about that in a moment, but I'm circling around trying to wrap it up just because I have extra time in my music, or I'm just talking for the sake of talking because I have two minutes left in my song, or I have to cut myself off really quickly and talk really fast because I'm, and thanks for listening. I'm out of time. That kind of thing. Instead of doing that, 
I let myself speak naturally, say what I need to, and if I mess up the timing, I can fix it in post-production because the audio from my voice is recorded onto a separate track from the audio from my music or any other kinds of sounds that I might be playing. So it gives me a lot more flexibility in fixing these things. So if you're recording onto the same track, that can be a mistake in some cases. If you find yourself struggling with that timing for your intro or your outro, record onto separate tracks. Again, it could be as simple as putting your voice on the left side, your soundtrack on the right side. Just make sure you remember to merge it back together to mono in your final recording. If you're recording with remote guests, I suggest that you record them into a separate track as well. That way you have more editing potential with them, especially as you get people who, like point number five, talk over each other. So this is point number six, recording onto the same track as one of the 10 production mistakes podcasters make. Number seven, buzzard circling. Think of the buzzards that you see, vultures and ravens and other birds that are scavenger birds. You see them circling and circling and circling and circling and circling and circling circling around this dead thing. And we always know when we see these buzzards circling, something is dead. But is that bird ever going to land? That's what we can sometimes do in our podcasting. And this can be near the end of the podcast where we're trying to time things just perfectly instead of editing it afterward. But it can also be just in the way that we're talking. This happens often where someone will kind of beat around the bush as they're trying to say something. They're talking while they're thinking and they're working themselves up to it. And it sounds like intro after intro after intro after intro before they finally get to what it is that they're going to say. For example, You might ask a question and someone says, yeah, that's a really good question. And when you think about this question and when I think about that question, how good of a question that is, it's really a question that needs a great answer. And the answer to that question is something that I've thought about for a very long time. Because when you look at all of the potential answers that are out there, there's only really one answer to that question. And the best answer that I can give you to that question is the answer after years and years of research. And that answer is yes. Why didn't I just say yes, if that was the answer to the question? And I'm not talking about bad interview technique where you just answer with single word answers, but I'm talking about where you're not getting to the point. This was something that my producer really pointed out to me that he hears a lot of podcasters make, that they say all of these things, and he can just so often just select such a big portion of this, cut it out, and then they've got a nice, concise answer that answers the question without this intro after intro after intro. So watch out for this buzzard circling because this could create a production nightmare where maybe you provided some bit of value in your intro, but then you have a lot of fluff and then you have some value in another piece of another intro and then some fluff and then you actually get to your answer. So you could either remove all of that intro Or you could remove some of the fluff between, and it gets really difficult to edit. So this can become a production mistake if you are buzzard circling around your topic. That's number seven. Number eight, including unwanted noises. There are many different unwanted noises. These could be background noises like the air conditioner or garage door, kids screaming in the background, lawnmowers going... Yes, some of the stuff you can't really control, but try to as much as possible. It might mean postponing something. It might mean taking care of a problem. It might mean suffering for your craft and turning off the air conditioner, turning off the heater, bundle up if it's winter, do whatever you need to if it's summer. What I often do before I do a podcast recording is that I over adjust the heater or the air conditioner for the other people that are in my house. So I account for the fact that the heater or air conditioner will be off for an hour, maybe even two hours, and then let the house be a more comfortable temperature for a longer amount of time. Sometimes maybe just giving someone else a window unit or a room heater can be a lot better. That way they can keep that room at a comfortable temperature without having to run your whole house heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system and making that noise in your recording. But there are plenty of other unwanted noises that could make it into your recording. For example, 
headphone feedback. That is where your headphone volume is too loud and it's feeding itself back into the microphone. This could happen for multiple reasons. One is that your audio is just playing too loud for your ears, or it could often be the design of your headphones, that your headphones leak audio really badly and they leak back into your microphone. The disadvantage here is that headphones that don't leak very much could give you a headache if you talk while you're wearing the same headphones because they'll block the outside sound a lot. I did an episode all about headphones at theaudacitypodcast.com slash headphones if you want to check that out and learn more about picking a good pair of headphones for podcasting. But the feedback that you might receive won't necessarily be a feedback loop where you're getting this loud buzz because your headphones are too close to the microphone. It could be feedback from the person who's on the other side of the recording. And this can make it very difficult if you have to shift things around. Most of the time, you won't notice headphone leak as long as everything lines up perfectly. But if you don't line it up perfectly, it could sound like a weird echo. It could sound like some odd electronic background noise. So try to avoid that unwanted noise of headphone feedback. Other unwanted noises could be mouth noises like actual lip smacking. It could be weird breathing noises. There's a podcast I listen to where you can hear the breath of the host every single time, and it's really loud. Part of that, I think, goes back to how their compressor limiter gate is configured, either their hardware or their software at one. But other people will just be way too close to the microphone. And a problem with getting too close to the microphone, as I am right now, just about as close to the microphone as I can get, is that you're hearing a lot more noises from me as I talk. And and I'm a bit conscious about this right now, so I'm probably not making as many noises as I normally would. But get away from the microphone a little bit, and then the lip noises and mouth noises won't make it into your recording. Other unwanted noises could be those noises like a cough, a sniffle, a sneeze, someone in the house talking or making some kind of noise, anything like that that could make it into your recording and it's prominent enough to be a distraction. If you have a runny nose, I know that can be difficult and might not always be possible for you to pause while you blow your nose. That could be where, this will be a little bit gross, but let your nose run, keep a tissue where you just wipe it to keep it from dripping onto stuff. You don't want snot damage. I don't think that's covered under warranties of most hardware equipment, but that will prevent you from having to do the (sniffs) unconsciously because we can sniffle so unconsciously. And I see it sometimes in podcasters that they'll be talking and without thinking about it, they'll just go (sniffs) right into the microphone and it's loud, obnoxious sometimes, and it can be difficult to edit, especially if their audio is not on its own track and it's mixed in with everything else. So I might be talking, and at the same time, you hear this sniffle or this cough go on in the background. That kind of unwanted noise can make it into the recording and make for a poor recording and poor production. It could also be computer sounds, like maybe your computer fan is running too loudly, or maybe you forgot to mute notifications on your computer or on your devices. I hear podcasts where I hear this, in the background because it's their iOS device or something else reminding them of something or it's notifying them of a text or the one that really bothers me when it happens to me and I turn my phone either off or set it to do not disturb but that is a buzzing in the background when the phone goes and depending on the case that you have with your phone that might be another louder thing that happens with the buzzing It could also be computer keyboard noises. Depending on the computer you have, you might have one of those older keyboards that sound practically like a typewriter with every key that you press. That can make it into the recording. And any one of these could be really difficult to edit out. So that's number eight, including unwanted noises. And number nine, similar to this, not allowing for editing. When you get one of these kinds of unwanted noises into your recording, It could be a big mistake to say, oh, we'll edit that out in post, or maybe even draw attention to that in your episode to say, oh, well, we'll edit edit that out. That's okay. And not realize that, no, you can't edit that out. 
if I'm talking and a dog is barking in the background at the same time, I can't edit that out. There is no dog bark removal filter. If there is, it won't work very well because the sound is merged together. It's not like layers in Photoshop or pieces of paper that you can just remove one and leave the rest okay. So if something happens that you know you need to edit out, allow for that. Compensate for it. If a loud noise happens, pause, say what it is you needed to say again. I do this often now that I know that I've got John editing my audio, is that if I have an unwanted sound that makes it into my recording, I often just pause, place a marker in the recording, and then say what it is I said over again. So that might be someone sniffled, my dog barked, something else happened, maybe I bumped the microphone, anything like that that creates that unwanted noise. If it's in the background while I'm talking, it's not going to be easy to remove. So this is number nine, allow for that editing. And the mistake is not allowing for this kind of editing. If you can't place a marker in your recording, then the next best way to do this is pause for a long amount of time because that can help you to find that spot very easily in your audio editor to find yeah here's a five second pause that something bad happened here that i need to edit that can be a bit awkward though if you're recording with other people another thing that you could do is make some loud noise that will show up on your recording for example maybe it's three claps and that will show up on your recording as oh there are three spikes there's something there i need to edit Again, that could be a bit distracting if you're recording with someone else. The other way to do it is just keep a pad of paper and pen next to you and then write down the time code of about when that edit spot was so you can go back and edit those things backwards. Go from the end to the beginning when you're editing those things. So that's number nine, not allowing for editing. And number 10 production mistake podcasters make using poor mic technique. This could be many different things. And I know sometimes you might have a guest that just is not very comfortable with the microphone. Don't assume your guest knows how to work with a microphone unless they're another podcaster. And then I hope they know how to work with a microphone. But bad mic technique could be something like touching the microphone, moving it around. Or if your microphone is attached to a table, they're tapping their hands on the table, causing rumbling noise back into the microphone. It could be plosives. Here, I'll move my pop filter out of the way of my microphone and talk close to the microphone. So Peter Piper picked a pick of pickled peppers. There are those plosives in there. That's that's an extra puff of air making it into the microphone and making for a poor quality recording. It could also be that you're too far away from the microphone as I am now. I'm a bit far away from the microphone. I turned up my gain to account for this so now I'm farther away and you're getting a lot more noise into the recording because of this it could also be that someone is too close to the microphone and you get those mouth noises or uh, especially what might happen is that they end up being too loud in the microphone and they're clipping and their voice distorts or you get a lot of those sounds into the microphone and it just sounds too bassy with the microphone. It's called the proximity effect, where the closer you get to the microphone, the more bassy you sound. That's why ElectroVoice has designed a couple of their microphones with what they call a variable D filter, where it accounts for this and it then appropriately adjusts the audio so that you don't have that proximity effect so much. Poor mic technique can really kill a podcast recording. There are so many things that we could talk about this for a long time, mic technique and things to do. So this can make either production nightmare for you to edit these things out, or if you leave this stuff in, then it adds to that idea that podcasting is just amateurs. And amateur doesn't necessarily mean that you don't take this seriously and you don't do it well but it has a poor quality sound to it if you're using poor mic technique. So these 10 production mistakes podcasters make. Number one, having bad volume. Number two, publishing poor audio quality. Number three, writing few or no show notes. Number four, editing and processing too much or too little. Number five, talking over each other. 
Number six, recording onto the same track. Number seven, buzzard circling. Number eight, including unwanted noises. Number nine, not allowing for editing. And number 10, using poor mic technique. One additional thing I'll include, kind of a bonus here. It's not really a production mistake. It's uh, an ethical mistake that goes into the production of podcasts. And that is using copyrighted music in your podcast. Big, big mistake. That's a legal problem. Here's the thing in general, and I'm not a lawyer. I don't play one in this podcast. I have been trained in certain copyright things because that was part of my music training when I went to school for music composition. (laughs) A little trivia thing there that you now know about me. Copyright is a serious thing. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter how big your audience is. It doesn't matter whether you paid for the song or you got it through torrent or it was given away for free. None of that matters. Unless you have written permission to use the song, assume that however it is you want to use it will be illegal. There, yes, are exceptions to this, like the fair use clause, certain things like parody makes it okay, or if you are commenting on it. But even if you're commenting, that doesn't give you the permission to play the entire piece. You might just play a small portion and you have to be using it for the sake of commentary, review, criticism, something like that. This is how I can use sound clips from the TV show Once Upon a Time in our podcast about the TV show. Because when we play those sound clips, we're playing them for the sake of commentary. So we're covered under fair use. But if you decide, oh, I'm going to do a fan podcast about this TV show, and you use the theme song from that TV show as your theme song, that is illegal. You can get in big trouble with that. So use this as your guideline. Unless you have written permission, don't use it. There are very few exceptions to that. That applies to most podcasters as the basic rule. Unless you have permission, don't use it. So this is 10 production mistakes podcasters make in one little legal bonus there that goes into your production. I'd love to hear from you. What do you think of these production mistakes? What are some of the other production mistakes you've seen or you've made and how can podcasters overcome them? Please comment on the show notes for episode 194 at theaudacitypodcast.com slash production mistakes. And I'd love to hear from you and keep that conversation going. I've got a great episode planned for episode 195 or 196. It will be talking about the different power press feeds that you can get for your podcast when you're running WordPress and power press, like category podcasting and custom podcast channels and the default feed and taxonomy podcasting and custom post type podcasting, those kinds of things that you may see them in power press and think, huh? What is that? When would I ever want to use that? I have some great content prepared, and I'm going to be having Angelo Mendado, who is the developer behind PowerPress, as a guest on the episode, and we'll be talking about the different feeds that PowerPress provides and when you may or may not want to use each of them and what their purposes are so that you can make a more informed decision when you're setting up your podcast or when you're adding a new podcast to your website or anything like that, when you're working with PowerPress in general. That will be in an upcoming episode. Feel free to send your questions, but I think we've already got content pretty well figured out. Also coming up, another exciting episode is number 200, where I'll be interviewing John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire. And we'll be talking about his success in podcasting, talking about some of the realities of what it took to get to that success How many sleepless nights did he have? How much did he have to spend in order to get to the point where he was? How much money did he have to begin with? How much money is stuff actually making? I really want this to be both inspirational as well as bringing some of the cold hard truth in some things. For example, I honestly here, I often struggle with jealousy for when I see other people like Pat Flynn and John Lee Dumas really hitting it out of the park with popularity, invited to all of these conferences, with the major success that they're having. But then I have to remind myself, and this is what I want the episode to do for you, is to remind myself, that's their success. That's not my success. My success looks different, and I can make my success be whatever I want it to be. It's mine to define up to my own personality. 
And so I can pursue my own success and achieve it better than they could because it's my success that I'm pursuing. So it will be a great conversation I'll have with John Lee Dumas. That's for episode 200 coming up. Please send me your questions that you want me to ask him. No question will be too straightforward. We'll just try to fit as many relevant podcasting questions in as we can, talking about his success in podcasting. Please email that or any other feedback you have for the Audacity to Podcast, questions you have, things that you'd like me to cover by emailing it to feedback at the audacity to podcast.com. And if you're sending a question for John Lee Dumas, just have his initials JLD in the subject line and that helps it stand out better to me. I'd love to help you with your podcast, whether it is that you are wanting to start your podcast or maybe you're having a problem with your podcast you need fixed or you want to improve your podcast. Please let me know how it can work with you. Email me feedback at the audacity to podcast.com or contact me through the website theaudacitypodcast.com. Thank you to Masked Matinee, Rush to Danger, and Eamon Lawyer for your kind reviews in iTunes. I really appreciate that. It encourages me and it helps other people find the podcast. And if you want to learn how you can get your own reviews for your podcast emailed to you automatically, check out mypodcastreviews.com. Stitcher integration launching soon. Should be this week. I'm excited. And now that I've given you some of the guts and taught you some of the tools, it's time for you to go launch or improve your own podcast for sharing your passions and finding success. I'm Daniel J. Lewis from the audacity to podcast.com. Thank you for listening. The Audacity to Podcast is a proud member of Noodle Mix Network. Find more of our award-winning and award-nominated podcasts to make you...